Today I want to talk about how to insert the trocars as safely as possible. You want to make your skin incision very slightly larger than the trocar itself. If you make it too large, then the trocar is going to be sliding in and out as you pass your instruments through it. If you make it too small, then when you it's going to be stretching, the trocar is going to be stretching the skin edge. And when you take it out, you're going to find that the trocar has squeezed all the fluid out of the cells at the skin edge and it's actually going to feel like leather or sometimes even plastic if, if it's bad enough. So that doesn't heal as well. It's harder to sew so you want to try to avoid that. Let's talk about the uh, different kind of trocars. So you have the sharp trocars which obviously are easier to put in because they're sharp but the downside of that is because they're sharp when they go in and through the abdominal wall then you have the organs and other tissue beneath that you may be you're at greater risk of damaging. So what I find the surgeons use more nowadays is the uh, clear visiport where I'm going to show you. The scope actually goes through this hole here and then they can see clearly here because this is clear and this is the tip. You can see it's not real sharp on the tip but it has some beveled edges here on the sides to help it go through. So this takes a little more effort to get it through, get it through the abdominal wall, but it's safer. And there's a little bit of a trick to doing it, and I'll I'll show you in a minute. This one actually has a balloon on it. So once they get that in, they're going to want to blow up the balloon. And I will show you. This large one takes 10 cc's of air. And the smaller one takes, the, the, the five port takes five cc's of air. And then some of them would push this down against the incision on the, uh, the abdominal wall. So this is the inside, inside the abdomen, abdomen, and this is outside the abdominal wall. So that holds that in position. But I find more surgeons just really use the clear one that would still have that port that you can put the uh, scope through and see. And yet it doesn't have the balloon on it. It, it just has threads on it that help hold it in place and I see this used most. So let's talk a little bit about the layers that you're going to be going through as you're putting something through the abdominal wall. You're going to have, obviously you're going to have the skin, you're going to go through the subcute tissue, but then you're, the muscle layers are going to have fascia on the anterior and the posterior side of it and that's what's going to give you the resistance and then you're going to have the peritoneum on the posterior fascia. So when you go to put it in, it's going to be the resistance that you're going to get, the best I can describe it is as if you had a balloon, that, an, a well inflated balloon, and you took the, the blunt end of a chopstick and you were pushing against that balloon. Can you imagine the resistance you would have. And then when you push hard enough, eventually that balloon is going to pop and all of a sudden you lose that resistance and, and your chopstick is going to tend to go forward because you're pushing on that balloon. That's kind of the same feeling when you're putting the trocars in. So you're going to take the trocar. So what you want to do, you want to be prepared for that because you want to, you know that it's going to take that pop and that it's going to give. So you want to have your opposing muscles so you have control. So what I find, I'm going to stand up for a second here, what I find I like to do is I like to have my elbow bent at right angles so that I have this ready when to pull back or to stop it when it goes through. If I didn't do that, when it went like this, when, it, when the pressure was released and popped through the fascia, my arm would tend to go forward. So I want this so that when it goes through, I can stop it with this hand. I, I have control of it. So you make your skin, skin incision just large enough and then I'm going to sit down again. What I find I do, it's like crossing the road. I'll just put this as soon as I have my skin incision, I'll put it through. Okay, with my arm up like this, put it through. And then I look up on the monitor to see where I am. And then it's like when you're crossing the street, you look left, right, and then before you cross, you look left once more. Well, that's what I do. I, I've looked at, at the outside when I put it in, then I look on the monitor to see where it is. And I take one last look to see what the angle is on the outside. And then the rest of the time, I'm looking at the monitor. So you're gonna start pushing. And when you push, you're going to turn your wrist, okay, and you're going to feel it, you're going to feel it going through, okay. When it has that pop, 
then you can be ready to hold back and stop it when it pops through. Now, what do you do if you don't have a lot of room in the abdomen and you're trying to insert a trocar? Well, you can still control that pretty well. You're going to go through with your trocar, feeling the resistance for the two pops, the anterior and the posterior fascia. And then what you're going to see, you have the peritoneum, which is very thin and flimsy. So what you're going to see happening, pretend this is the peritoneum, you're going to see that little pucker. You're going to see the little tenting of the peritoneum. Once you get that tenting and that trocar tip is, well, the obturator, the obturator tip is engaged with the peritoneum, then if you don't have much room, say you're going in this way and you don't have much room, as soon as you see that little tip engaged with the peritoneum through, you know, through the fascia, then you can actually tip this this way and go in more parallel to the upper abdominal wall and that's keeping you off the organs beneath. So you would want to do that. And then it won't be, when it slides, they call it skiving. It won't be skiving. It'll be going the way you want it because you've already engaged it in the perineum and it's the perineum that's bending. But when you get it through, you're going to find you're going to have the angle that you want. Okay. And just a quick little thing. If you're putting in for thoracic trocars, they're much smaller. They're about half the size of these. And there is a way to put that in too. Uh, you want to be sure that you have your ribs here. And on each rib, on the underside of the ribs, is an artery, a nerve, and a vessel and a vein. So you, when you made your incision, you don't want to take, and you need to stretch it a little bit with a, a long kelly, a large kelly. You don't want to do it this way because if you're trying to stretch the incision this way, you're putting pressure on that nerve and you can cause a patient unnecessary pain. So you want to put your large kelly in to dilate it and do it this way, parallel with the nerve, parallel with the, the um, the rib. And then you don't need pneumo because the the thoracic cage will keep the chest open and in, inflated. You will find that some surgeons do like to use the pneumo anyway because that helps compress the lungs so they have more room to work. So there you have it and good luck.